So I had a pizza joke all lined up for the beginning of this video, but uh, turns out it was too cheesy. Let's build it. First rule of business when making pizzas, we're going to need our dough. A lot of people think that you use flour and all that, but that's just simply wrong. What we're going to need to do is add a plain and then crush it into the classic pizza shape. We'll be taking this slice and using it to create a full pizza as we work, although we're really only making one slice. Don't tell the customers. We'll use an array mod with an object offset, which we'll use an empty object for. Now, when I rotate the empty, we can spin it to pizza. Our slice is still going to need some work though, so I'll scale it in and out to get the edges close enough and push out the edge of our saw to round that baby out. Now it's time to put the work in on our home slice. Add an edge to our crust for extrusion purposes so we can bevel the top to round it out. We'll also need to add some thickness to the slice itself. On the slice, we can add some middle loops, which we're going to need a little bit later, chef's secret. And finally, we can go ahead and triangulate the point. Duplicate the top for our bottom, fill in the rest of the crust, round out the profile, push some verts around, and bevel the bottom edge to have a decent looking pizza in 10 easy steps. Now, admittedly, our pizza is looking kind of sad. I mean, who just buys a cheese pizza? At least throw some pineapple on there. <laughs> Fine, we'll just do pepperoni. We can use this circle, extrude it up, fill in the face and even round off the top if you so choose. I also want to make sure that it deforms well, so I'll join all the verts so that there is something that can bend. Now we just need to place this dude and I'm thinking right here is the perfect spot -aroni. Now I'll just shade it smooth, turn on auto smooth normals, bump it up to 50 degrees and it's smooth sailing from here. Next it's unwrapping time. To place seams, I'm going to use the pick shortest path hockey to select our edges and change the edge tag to be tag seam. Where you seam is up to you, but I try and block off my pizza into painting sections, since we don't really have to worry too much about seam lines when painting. With the UVs, it helps to orient the shelves in a way that makes sense for painting, in case we need to paint in our UV space. Let's also try and maximize our space by scaling everything up and nice and snug to the boundaries of our texture set. That looks as good as it's going to get. Pizzas are a weird shape. Let's set up the material so we can finally add some texture. I'll create a new 1K image, which is going to be where we will paint all the juicy deets. Then I'll go into our material, plug an image texture node into our base color, and select our newly created image as a base color. As simple as that, we're ready to get painting. Now, full disclaimer, I am not a hand painting artist. So what you are about to witness is random grasps of traditional theory that are strung around in my brain. But let's face it, you didn't come for the knowledge, really. You came for my jokes. Aw, oh, you're so kind. I want to set up a palette of colors to use for this pizza so that I can keep the aesthetic rather consistent. Blender comes with this handy little palette option, which was enough for my simple needs. I'll pick some colors that I think I'll like for the cheese, the dough, some shading, highlighting, and dough variation. I kept it simple to start and slowly add along the way. First things first, let's paint on some cheese, Gromit. I'll spray paint on my initial layering of Cheeto dust into the areas that we would expect to find cheese on a pizza. There's probably easier ways, but I never did something because it was easy, so hey, here we are. I'll change the viewport to be flat shading for some vibrancy and start painting on my crust. Again, I'm just looking for a base layer here before we get into painting the final details. I'll paint the sides and the bottom as well, giving it some good covering. Now that our dough is looking doughy, we need our cheese to start looking cheesy. I'm going to want it to run down the sides of our pizza, so I'll paint in our UV space for a little more precision. There's no magic here, and honestly I found that being a little sloppier with it yielded better results. You see, there's an art to the way of the cheese. Next, I'll paint on some highlights and shadows, again, pretty sloppily. Then I'll go over them with a blur and a smudge pass to blend it together much better. This will help it stand on its own a little better, and I'll keep working on it as we go along. Where the cheese and the crust meet is where I'd like to impose my own saucy agenda. Using our shadow color, I'll start blocking in some sauce and shadow info to help define surface interaction. I will be forever in a constant back and forth between painting and blurring. 
Now I can paint on some crust highlights and add some overall variation to the crust. With a darker brown, I'll go in and add some variety to the bottom to give it a more cooked feel. I also want to roughen the ends of the crust that would be where it was connected to other slices. I'm going to round out the edges by adding highlights and then shadows on the underside. I want it to appear softer and hopefully make our sharp geometry almost disappear. Paint, blur, smudge and repeat until it looks decent enough is pretty much the name of the game here. Up next is our pepperoni. I'll just fill it with a solid color first, then darken the sides where it connects with a za. To add some variety that I'm too lazy to paint manually, we are going to make a procedural mask. I'll make a distorted noise image, but it's too small. I'll bring the size up, and that's looking more like it. I'll also change it to Voronoi F1, and crank up our amount until the image looks random. With our highlight color on soft light and a strength of 0.05, I'm thinking that's looking pretty sweet. I'll keep adding some variation to it with random circles, colors, and patterns to add a little bit more vibrance to it overall. Once I'm happy with it, duplicate that guy as much as you want and place it around the pizza. I'll want to orient the edge loops to be similar with the face of the cheese for later. To add more variety to the cheese top, I'll do the same thing we just did for the pepperoni. Make a crazy noise texture, play around with the colors and values, and just start painting. As you can tell, I really have it down to a science. Not. To wrap up our color, I want to blend in our pepperonis a little bit better. I'll start by adding some saucy shadows underneath them on the cheese. It's pretty easy to go overboard here, and subtlety is key with this particular part I found. Play around with the different strengths, brushes, and blending modes to find something a little bit different that looks good to you. With our texturing now complete, let's add a little bit of personality to this guy. I'm going to use a lattice to deform our pizza, since it gives us the most non-destructive means of getting a little messy. Make sure the lattice is completely covering the entirety of your model before you get to editing. We also want to give it a few loops in order to use it effectively. So grab your best paper plate and let's serve up some pizza. Using the lattice, I'll position the pizza onto the plate and have some of the end hang off the side. Just like editing vertices, we can edit the lattice to transform the pizza like proportional editing would. Now it all comes down to pushing and pulling verts to find something you like, and bada boom bada bing, you got yourself a za just like Ma used to make. Eh, that was hardly an accent, but believe me, I, I promise I won't do it again. Well, that's pizza. Or at least how I'd make one. Let me know how I did down in the comments, wiggle your mouse over to that subscribe button, and make sure to leave a like. Or don't. But just remember, I'll know you didn't. The resources from this video will be available over on the CG Cookie site for logged in members as well, link in the description. As always, I've been Chunk, this has been Let's Build It in Blender, later skater. Why does the mushroom always get invited to the pizza parties? Because he's a fun guy. What is a pizza maker's favorite song? Well, it's Slice Slice Baby, come on, everybody knows that one. Why was the pizzeria desperate for business? Well, needed the dough.